Hi guys, welcome to the gun shop. Today we're going to be having a look at this, the Yildiz Pro in the Sporta variant. And it's really nice. So starting with the pad, kind of a strange two-piece construction. You've got this hard plate that's hand-fitted to the gun, and then you've got this soft bit that's sort of moulded into it. It's soft all the way around, so, you know, it's quite a pleasant thing to shoot, actually. You can kind of get a bit of a grip on it. It's got no hard edges. It's not too tacky. It's a nice pad. Anyway, move on from the pad. It's not that exciting. The wood. The wood is a grade 4 as standard, but you can pay for an upgrade to grade 5 if you feel the need. Given that this grade 4 is absolutely astonishingly beautiful, given this guy 1600 quid the grade 5 is even even more so and actually we've seen a variety of the grade 4s and they are all stunning however for extra 150 pounds if you really want to guarantee yourself something that it is enviable beyond belief why not pay the extra 150 quid or whatever it is for the grade 5 laser checkered, checkered in two separate panels and it is a full-ish pistol grip First thing, I'll, first thing I'll say about the grip is it is really quite long, really quite large. It's not going to be totally suitable for small hands without choking up on it. Not that that's the end of the world, but to use all that grip, you do need a fair size of hand. There is no palm swell. There is no palm swell. That would be a lovely addition if they did put that in, but obviously uh, that is not available yet. However, you could always cut and insert one if you wanted, but it's going to be hard given the, the beauty of the wood to do that without then extending the, the checkering panel. However, I say all this like it's an inconvenience. You could do buy the gun, have a pass well put in, have it rechecked to your custom set, and it's still not be a huge amount of money. But that's by the by. Anyway, moving back quickly, there is an adjustable comb addition, and that will bring that balance just that little bit more perfectly over the hinge pin. However, it's not hideous as it is. The safety catch is selectable. Red for fire and a little green inlet safe. It's quite a nice feature, looks quite good. There is no indication of which one is up and down, so you just have to learn that as you go. The top lever is completely plain, apart from the Yildiz stamp on there, and again, that's really very cleanly done. And you also have this beautiful bordering that goes almost all the way around the gun, as you can see. Looks great. Yildiz Pro on the side, and Yildiz on the bottom. Really extremely clean. No adjustment on the trigger, just a plain silver trigger. And apart from that, there's nothing much more to write home about. These beautifully deep carved fences are actually really well done. The metal to metal fit is great. The wood to metal fit is outstanding. Unbelievable, absolutely outstanding. Um, and so I think we can say externally, this gun is, is really, really well made. Uh, moving on, the barrels are steel proved. The forehand is a little deeper than perhaps a Parazzi original might be. And we'll move on. I should say at this point that action is is not quite a carbon copy externally of a Parazzi, but it is almost identical. The ejector work certainly is. It is a, it's, a, it's a really shallow boss style action, same as a Parazzi. As you can see, all the surfaces are in a really nice high polish. But there's very little about this gun that I can pick that I dislike. 18.4 and 18.5 bores, nice true board gun. You have a 6mm parallel rib across the top there with this high-vis bead sight, and it comes with a set of five internal chokes. Like I've just said, there's very little about this gun that I, I'm finding that I can dislike. Locks up absolutely beautifully. Locks up absolutely beautiful. Interchangeable little pressure lug on the forend there, and the whole forend again, machined absolutely exquisitely. And it goes together, just so the whole thing operates really very, very well. The last thing before we actually go internally, because I really want to just have a look inside and see if it is as well made internally as it is externally. I'm going to just drop a snap cap in and just test, test that trigger pull out. And it, I mean, that, it, as trigger pulls go, actually is very, very crisp. A little bit of sponge leading into it, but by comparison, I mean, really very nice, actually. Really very, very nice. Anyway. 
that's quite enough. The last thing I'll say, actually, before I take it apart, I keep saying this, is that their barrel steel is imported from Italy. So no one can complain about the steel quality because it's probably exactly the same as all the rest of them are using. Anyway, let's pop this stock off and have a look inside. All right, so here we have the action separated from the stock work. And have a look at that. Tell me what you think. In terms of finish, I'm really struggling to see anything in there that is bad. Obviously not a true Parazzi clone, although Parazzi's are available with coil springs on occasion, their standard set is with V-Springs. The V-Spring does give you a little bit of a shorter lock time, a little bit more of a consistent strike. However, expecting a V-Spring in a gun like this might be a little bit much. However, there's nothing wrong with those coil springs because clearly the way the triggers operate and such is, is still exceptional. Everything in here is actually going to be made of steel as well, which is, well, without dropping any other company's names in it or any other, let's say, gun models in it, it's probably the easiest way of saying it, other manufacturers might not be using steel for some fairly important major parts, which might be a lot of my issue with a significant amount of the cheaper Turkish guns. However, this is nice. Everything about it is nice. Yeah, there's a few places that perhaps they're going to have to cut corners. And when I say cut corners, only in terms of action design, just for reliability, consistency, um, and cost. You know, making a spring like this is significantly easier than making a spring in a different fashion. Making a coil spring is going to be easier than making a V spring. But everything in there is lovely. In terms of drive, it's all co cocked via one standard cocking bar, same as a Parazzi. You have the same two locking lugs that come out the side, same as a Parazzi. You have the same little pin that sets that top lever back straight. Hey, you guessed it, same as a Parazzi. Very clever. You like this. I like this. Ready? Oh, and it locks in. Really, really well regulated, really nicely made. Anyway, it's enough of staring at pieces of metal and getting overexcited. Obviously not the same as a Parazzi MX-8 because it does not have a detachable trigger group. But let's say it is very reminiscent of a Parazzi. And actually, let's just take it as a standalone gun. Really nice. You've got these lovely little beads around the outside here. Everything about it, the engraving is really very clean. The action finish is clean. Everything that needs to be polished is polished. All the blacking, all the action finish just around the outside and the places that most people don't care. But the machine work is exceptional. Anyway, let's pop it back together. Uh, the only thing I don't like is this. This stock bolt is not that substantial. And perhaps it would have been nice. And of course, it's all about seeing the value in it. And I do. So actually, this is me just being pernickety for the sake of it. It would have been nice to see it done with like their own stock tool type of thing. But just having it on a 10mm bit does make it this easy. Done. So, I mean, it's no surprise to you at this point that I'm going to say that I really like it. I mean, for 1600 quid, you're getting so much gun. There's a lot about it that looks so much more. The wood is delicious. However, it's not perfect. Because if it was perfect for 1600 pounds, well, that would have been amazing. Uh, to make it perfect, this grip is flared too much at the bottom and is too thin. In reality, what I'd want it's just, if anything, to, to create a palm soil, to inlet wood, or just to take a little bit of the nose out, just, just so I can command that grip just that little bit better. For a big grip, it still feels quite small, it's, or for a long grip, it feels quite small. That's the best way of putting it. Uh, so, a palm swell, 100%. I think I would probably personally invest in the adjustable comb option. As a standard stock, it's a little bit low. And perhaps, there's nothing wrong with the length, but to make it, let's say, 15 as standard, might have been a little wiser. Apart from that, I genuinely can't pick any holes in it. The only thing where they do copy the Parazzi system, perhaps in terms of inertia block, so they mildly copy it. Parazzi's do struggle with 21 grams sometimes out of the box, so that might be another little issue there. However, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't feel £7.13. That I'll say for it, it doesn't feel £7.13. It feels good. Feels good. The only thing I would like, perhaps, like I said, it's just a little bit more weight. But I think that will be accomplished in the adjustable cone version. And guess what? When they arrive, I'm going to take one out and I'm going to go shoot it. I'm going to film it. Guys, take care. Thank you very much for watching. Do not be put off by the yielder's name. You know, it would be a bit like comparing a Fiat 500 to a Ferrari. I know that's a bit radical, but 
it's different gun. It is just amazing. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.